Welcome back to 1K Plus, where I make your Minnesota wildest dreams come true. You too can become a millionaire without spending any money on packs. While this episode will focus on the collectibles market, first I got a tip from Sir HCP27. In regards to bid wars, it reads, Hey Santa, fan, redditor, and I still believe in you. A tip for you to save some time this Christmas season. On toys that you want to get, uh, I, I don't know how to turn that into to, to like a Christmassy spirit thing. But do that so you don't have to bounce in and out of the workshop. Basically, you can see it in the background what I'm doing. I'm holding down right trigger or R2, and I'm switching between last seven days, last 14 days, and whatever to see whether or not I got outbid. And then you just switch to unsuccessful bids if you got outbid, or just go to like bids one if you won. So you don't have to back in and out of the auction house, like you said. It's a lot more seamless this year, which is which is very nice. All right, on to the collectibles market. I'm not even talking about base collectibles. I'm talking about team of the week collectibles in particular. I've been going papayas over these team of the week collectibles, as you'll see. By by the end of the video so first things first you guys gotta know how much these collectibles are going for they're not going for the same price as they were in the video i'll tell you that but when i started this i think they were going for like 8k so i'm buying them for 5k as soon as they pop up the great thing about these collectibles is they are gonna be in packs year round in any packs really there's always gonna be a team of the week set who knows if uh they're gonna change like the collectibles required for the set so that might be something you have to watch out for but every wednesday at 5 p.m eastern time i believe a new team of the week set is going to come out and so everyone is going to be well trying to either get rid of all their collectibles or buy up all the collectibles it depends how good the team of the week is actually going to be it depends on how much collectibles got hoarded by players just buying up all the collectibles but chances are everyone's gonna want to do the set on that day so there's gonna be a lot of collectibles going in and out a lot of players that pull these collectibles in packs may not even know the current prices of them so you'll find that these collectibles can either go for pennies for like 1,000, or they could be using like an old price. Like these Team Elite collectibles used to go for like 5K, so people could be still putting them up for 5K even though they're worth 10K. Or some people just wanna get rid of the collectibles really quickly just because they buy a lot of packs. So you gotta hop on this, buy up these collectibles, and then sell them for just a little bit more. People are always going to be selling these collectibles and messing up their prices. So if you don't want to focus on players, you can focus on collectibles. Now there are a bunch of different ways of tackling these collectibles. Sometimes you can buy them for cheap prices and not sell them yet, sell them later on in the week when their prices go up like I do here. Though at that time, their price went up from 3k to 7.5k, so selling it for 6.5k was actually pretty good. You can do this method where you sort through all of the collectibles under like a certain price, under the price of the Team of the Week collectible in this case. And when you see the Team of the Week collectible, you just instantly buy it and then put it up for something higher. I happen to also do it with the prime time and milestone collectibles. But you can do it with pretty much any collectible that is out there. At the time of this video's release, I have uh, done it with flashback collectibles and evolution collectibles, but that's probably just going to be in the next video. Just make sure you don't do it with the centennial collectibles, only because they're temporary. I guess any other temporary collectibles that come out. You should only be flipping those ones for just a few days. Because after some time, people will just not care about them anymore, like these centennial collectibles. But as you see, I'm still employing the 59 minute method here by flipping back and forth. I just can't use a synergy trick to see like where the uh, new collectibles are coming up. So you do have to keep a mental note of where those new collectibles should be at the 59 minute mark. Now this new method that I've been employing is searching for collectibles or really any card. The buy now price being much lower than what the card goes for that way i am guaranteed to get steals and so now what i'm doing is i'm just spamming the a button and look at how seamless and how fast it searches keep in mind it's x on the playstation 4 I, I i really hope i don't have to keep saying that but i feel like i do by doing this you're the first one pretty much to see the card and you're already on the card before anyone else as they're like flipping through the tabs of the L1 and R1 button. I truly believe that this is the 59 minute killer if enough people do this. And then all you really have to do is just memorize the motion or just 
I guess through muscle memory of how to buy the card instantly when it pops up. All you gotta do is press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. Boom, you got your card. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it won't do you much good if I just tell you. It's better that you try it yourself, and then, again, it's just muscle memory. Your fingers will know what to do when they get there, don't you worry. What's even better about all of this is I tweeted out recently that I can now flip cards blindfolded with one hand and that's thanks to this method because all i need is my headset on and i use the audio cues to tell me whether or not i found a card let's listen to the difference between me searching for cards and me finding a card and buying it You hear that little whoosh? That whoosh meant you found a card. And it's at that exact moment that I turn to my screen, I drop what I'm doing. I, if I had like food in my hand, I just like throw it across the room and I buy the card. I haven't done it with one hand yet, but I, I feel like I could. It's just a little slower. So I, I just want to guarantee that I find the card. So outside of that, I've also been investing in milestone collectibles because I find milestone collectibles are better than the primetime ones. On day one opening night, there are a lot of good players such as like Bergeron who are gonna get an upgrade because they just need to play one game or need to get one assist. So these sets will come out and well, maybe the prices of the collectibles won't like skyrocket like team of the week collectibles, but you're guaranteed to at least get your money back and hopefully something more. If anything, you can always throw them into the milestone set yourself. I think I'll have a link in the description to players who will be getting milestones soon, but I'm not sure if I can find it. Just, just check that anyway. So after that whole team of the week craze, I think I jumped up from like 200k to 500k plus all of the like milestone primetime collectibles that I bought, probably another like 250k. And, and just look at like all of the team of the week collectibles that I end up flipping. There's like four or five pages worth of them. Maybe more. I, I can't even count the amount of pages. I don't, I don't feel like it. You can count it. And I'm still flipping collectibles to this very day. All right, let's take a break from the collectibles market and let's let's watch an advertisement yes an advertisement in the game okay we got we got a bunch of uh oh they're talking really fast oh god oh god shooting stuff but what you can do in the menus is watch some advertisements you get rewarded with 200 coins per advertisement which isn't a lot but if you're strapped on cash which you shouldn't be because there are challenges and hopefully you've been flipping cards like i've told you but it's there so whenever you're craving for something new like taco bell go ahead and watch it so now from the collectibles, we're going to go back into players just for a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys what I did to the spreadsheet that I introduced last week. If you guys want to look at it, it's still in the description like it was before. This is being updated twice a day, afternoon and night Eastern time. You can follow my Twitter to know when it's updated because I'll tweet about it. I guess we started September 20th. We're looking at the prices of a bunch of player cards up here base gold cards you have the legends and you have the collectibles and so now if i flip it over to today's date 9 30 september 30th we have color what yep color now if you don't know like who the player is you can uh just look at the legend here if you don't know what team Wierenski plays for for instance then you can just look at the legend and see that the Blue Jackets because it's the same kind of um, style. It could get a little, like, it's not too bad for these uh, base gold cards. But if you look at legends, like, how do you, I don't even know, like, what team uh, Sanderson played for, who also happened to be for the Blue Jackets. And then similar idea with the heroes. You can see the cost of collectibles here. So with the heroes, what I did was uh, these costs are updated automatically just based on the bronze, silver, gold, and carbon costs. Um, what else can you see here? You can see the evolution card prices. You can see the silver goalies because they still go for like 15k plus. We've added team of the week, but I'm not sure if we're going to keep that around. So the prices of these cards... They're like the average prices or like the prices that the most people are putting it up for. So while Ekman Larson may have a card that goes up for like 7K or maybe there's a lot of them for 13K plus, the majority of the cards are between 7.5K and 12K. 
So that's why you don't want to snipe a card for 7k and put it up for 12k because that's his max value. You want to find something for like 5k and put it up for maybe 6.5k or 7k under his price so that it sells quickly and you get that steal. That's easier said than done because these cards just keep falling in price like crazy over the past 10 days when I started this spreadsheet. Like, look at this. Bergeron, uh, 30k plus. He, he was at 50k. And 10 days later, he's at 27 to 35k. And it's like that pretty much across the board. Crosby's really the only one who's uh, kept his price kind of around the same number. And so when I'm updating the spreadsheet, I'm looking at individual cards one at a time. And occasionally I'll just see cards that are really far away from that price that I'm updating it to. And that's how I get my snipes in this gold player base card market because I don't even do the 59 minute method anymore. It's not as worthwhile because I only get maybe like three or four cards. In this case, I got a Crosby, which was pretty nice. And it takes me like an hour to update the spreadsheet. So maybe it's not worthwhile for you guys to do, but I mean, if you if you want to do it, go ahead. Remember that when you're doing this, you're looking at players from like the three hour mark, the six hour mark, 12 hour mark, 24 hour mark, and the three day mark. For this Crosby, I noticed that all of his prices were like between 250 and 270K. So I snipe him for 215K and sell him for 240. I lose out on the 10K tax, but it's still like a 15K profit. And then similar idea even with like smaller cards like Duchesne. I think I'm also going to do like Huberdo here in a second. These cards often end up just staying up for like a good 15, 20 minutes before someone can even look at them. So you actually have a good amount of time to see them. Sadly, Duchesne isn't really even worth it anymore. Neither is Huberdo just because their prices are kind of like under 2K. But the spreadsheet will tell you who you should be flipping. Wait a second. This isn't Huberdo. It's Barkov, are you kidding me? White guys and their white faces, I swear. And so now, the moment of truth. This may be an evolution Austin Matthews card that goes for like 230k at the time of this video. And I just bought it for that price. And I'm sitting here astonished. Because contrary to popular belief, I don't get steals like that very often. But thanks to this Brian Storm method, I was able to do that. And while you can't see it here, at the time of this video, I did end up reaching a million coins in, I guess, my stash. Not my mustache, just thought I'd point that out. And it may have been from multiple flips like this one. So find out next week how that happened. I mean, I guess you already know based on what I just said. But see for yourself next week is what I'm trying to say. With that, thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions regarding anything about flipping cards or anything NHL 18 related, and I'll see you next time.